Are some combination wrenches really that much better than others, or is that $1 wrench just as good as the one that costs $40? Let's find out. In a first test, we'll see which wrench does the best job gripping a rusty bolt. Then we'll test the opened end for maximum gripping strength. We'll then test the failure load for both ends of the wrench. At a price of $9 for 9 wrenches, or only $1 each, is this Pittsburgh brand which is sold at Harbor Freight. Almost all the wrenches we'll be testing are half-inch 12 points. The Pittsburgh wrenches are made in India. And that's a lot of taper on the box end of the Pittsburgh. And the chamfer is supposed to help make it easier to place the wrench on the faster, but the wrench is giving up some grip. The Pittsburgh weighs 69.3 grams. In the first test, let's see which wrench performs the best on a rusty fastener. Several weeks ago, I removed the zinc plating on all the fasteners, and the bolts have around 100 treatments of very aggressive rusting agent. This allows for a pretty realistic scenario faced by a lot of people, especially those in the rust belt. I then used a wire wheel to remove as much rust as possible. To make this test more realistic, I'll reduce the contact area of the wrench by adding a washer between the faster and the wrench. The goal for each of the wrenches is to reach 370 inch pounds. This is the point in which the rusty bolts are likely to break. And if Pittsburgh has way too much taper and it gave up early at 203.7 inch pounds. At a price of $4 is this Husky brand. Manufactured from chrome alloy steel and heat treated for added strength. Chamfered lead-ins for easy and quick placement onto fasteners. The Husky is made in India. And the Husky weighs right at 74 grams. And the Husky easily passes tests surpassing the target torque of 370 inch-pounds and making it to 407.7 inch-pounds. We'll be testing two different combination wrenches made by GearWrench. The first one is a six-point and costs $7. Off-corner loading design on box end provides better grip and reduces faster rounding. We're going to test that. The gear wrench is made in China. The gear wrench is very light at 64.6 grams. And there's just way too much taper on the gear wrench 6.329.5 inch pounds. At a price of $8 is this Performance Tool brand. Box in provides rounded corners for increased torque. The Performance Tool wrench is made in China. Performance Tool weighs 74 grams. And there's just way too much taper on the Performance Tool 251.1 inch pounds. At a price of $9 is this Craftsman brand. And a Craftsman has quite a bit of taper. The Craftsman is made in India. And the Craftsman is the heaviest yet at 95 grams. And a Craftsman barely reached the 370 inch pounds before slipping. At a price of $10 is this Cobalt brand. And there's quite a bit of chamfer on the Cobalt. The Cobalt is made in China. The Cobalt weighs 77.6 grams. And the Cobalt gave up very early at only 168.3 inch pounds. Also at a price of $10 is this Crescent brand. A little bit less taper on the Crescent compared to some of the other brands. The Crescent is made in India. The Crescent weighs 80.7 grams. With less taper, the Crescent easily outlasted the bolt at 388.5 inch pounds. Also at a price of $10 is this Tecton brand. And the Tecton has less taper than most of the other brands. The Tecton is made in Taiwan. The Tecton weighs 80 grams. And the Tecton easily outlasted the bolt at 378.7 inch pounds. At a price of $11 is this Klein Tools brand. The Klein Tools is made in Taiwan. Klein Tools weighs 84.6 grams. And there's quite a bit of taper on the Klein Tools. With so much taper, the wrench just couldn't get a good grip, 321.1 inch pounds. At a price of $12 is this Williams brand. On the box end of the wrench, the Williams has a lot less chamfer compared to the previous brands. The Williams is made in Taiwan. And the Williams weighs 99.1 grams. Compared to the previous brands, the Williams has virtually no chamfer. Yeah, there's just no way the Williams is going to slip with such a great design. And the bolt broke at 403.8 inch pounds. At a price of $14 is this Matco brand. The Matco is made in Taiwan. And the Matco has quite a bit less taper compared to most of the previous brands. The Matco weighs 92 grams. And the Matco had no problem outlasting the bolt at 378.4 inch pounds. Also at a price of $14 is this gear wrench 12 point. Open end off corner loading design provides up to 25% more torque. Surface drive technology for better grip on fasteners. The gear wrench is made in Taiwan. The gear wrench weighs 95.7 grams. Just like the Matco, the 12-point gear wrench easily outlasted the bolt at 374.2 inch pounds. Also at a price of $14 is this right brand. Compared to most of the other branches, the box end on the right has a lot less chamfer. The right wrench is made in USA. The right weighs 85.1 grams. And the right performed very well making it to 369.1 inch pounds when the bolt broke. At a price of $19 is this Proto brand. Includes an anti-slip design open end. The Proto is made in USA. The Proto is the heaviest yet at 105.4 grams. And the Proto easily outlasted the bolt, making it to 390.1 inch pounds when the bolt gave up. Also at a price of $19 is this Godor brand. Slim jaw and slim walls make this spanner lighter overall. The Godor brand is made in Germany. And the Godor is very light at only 51.5 grams. With the minimal amount of taper, the Godor brand looks ready to go to work. Plenty of contact with the bolt. And the bolt broke at 375.3 inch pounds. At a price of $21 is this Sunex brand. V-Group design reduces wear on fasteners. And the Sunex uses a lot more taper on the leading edge of the box end compared to most of the other brands. The Sunex is made in India. The Sunex weighs 94. 4.9 grams. And the Sunex just couldn't get a good grip on the bolt. 240.3 inch pounds.
At a price of $22 is this Mac Tools brand. Non-slip open-end design prevents rounding off of faster edges. The Mac Tools is made in Taiwan. The Mac Tools weighs 104.4 grams. The Mac Tools box end has just a very small amount of taper. And the Mac wrench easily outlasts the bolt at 408.6 inch pounds. At a price of $22 is this SK brand, designed to avoid rounding rusted or damaged fasteners. The SK wrench is made in USA. SK tools weigh 73.6 grams. 370 is the number to beat, and the SK Pro broke the bolt at 374.8 inch pounds. I thought it'd be very interesting to add a vintage SK tools wrench. This one too is made in USA. The vintage SK weighs 72.6 grams. And a vintage SK wrench has way too much taper on the box end, 242.8 inch pounds. At a price of $117 for 12 wrenches, or approximately $12 each, is this Facom brand. The Facom wrenches are designed to ensure user safety when critical tightening torque is reached. The wrench is distorted gradually, meaning no braking. The Facom wrenches are made in France. And the Facom weighs right at 69 grams. And the Facom is very well designed for this test and outlasted the bolt at 373.3 inch pounds. At a price of $40 for just one wrench, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Snap-on. Snap-on claims their flank drive system grips the fastener flats and provides up to 15 to 20 percent more turning power. Manufactured from special alloy steel, precision forged, and heat treated. The Snap-on is made in USA. And the Snap-on weighs 90.4 grams. And the Snap-on bolt finally broke at 409.6 inch pounds, no damage to the head of the bolt. Too much taper on poorly designed 12-point wrenches oftentimes gives high-quality ones a bad reputation for rounding rusty fasteners. The first test is a pass-fail test, and most of the wrenches reach the target torque of 370 inch-pounds before losing grip or before the bolt broke. This next test is just a warm-up for the wrenches on some low-carbon steel bolts. The open end of the wrench is just too wide to make contact with the entire head of the bolt. I'll replace the bolt between testing each of the brands. This is just a warm-up test, and the upper jaw on the Pittsburgh just broke. And the Husky performed very well at 403.3 inch-pounds before losing grip. The gear wrench 6 point barely edged out the Husky at 406.9 inch pounds. And the performance tool lost grip at 385.3 inch pounds or about 20 less than the gear wrench. And the Craftsman moves into the lead over the gear wrench at 412.8 inch pounds. And the Cobalt gave up a little bit early at 373.3 inch pounds. And the Crescent slipped at 368.1 inch pounds. And the Tecton lost grip at 338.7 inch pounds. The Klein tools performed quite a bit better than the Tecton at 380.7 inch pounds. And the Williams performed about the same as the Klein tools at 381 inch pounds. The Matco performed quite a bit better than average at 410.8 inch pounds. The gear wrench also performed better than average at 411.1 inch pounds or very close to the same as the six point gear wrench. And the right performed very well at 400.5 inch pounds. And the anti slip design of the Proto performed very well at 424.8 inch pounds to move into the lead. And the slim and tall jaw design of the Ghidorah with the textured finish performed exceptionally well at 426.4 inch pounds to take the lead from the Proto. And the Sunex performed well at 401.1 inch pounds. And the Mac Tools is definitely onto something with their jaw design. 504.9 inch pounds, very impressive. And the SK Pro let go at 372.9 inch pounds. And the vintage SK wrench performed a little bit better than the new wrench at 391.8 inch pounds. And the Facon performed well above average at 421.9 inch pounds. And the Snap-on peaked at 427.3 inch pounds before the second attempt when the Snap-on slipped at 384 inch pounds, most likely due to the bolt having some damage. And the wrench with the best open end performance is the Mac Tools at 504.9 inch pounds. Snap-on finished in second at 427.3, Ghidorah 426.4, Proto 424.8, and Facom 421.9 inch pounds. Before moving on to the next test, I use a half inch Allen key, which is right at one half inch, along with a dial indicator to measure the back and forth slop for both ends of the wrench. If you're working in a tight space, slop can really hurt efficiency and a loose fit might also hurt the grip. At six inches from the base of the wrench, the Facom has the least amount of up and down travel on the open end of the wrench at 0.33 inches. Snap-on was about the same at 0.34, Husky 0.39, and Cobalt 0.42 inches. Some of the wrenches such as the gear wrench and the Proto use an off-corner loading design, but that causes a lot of excess back and forth unloaded travel. For the box end, the Mac Tools has the least amount of slop at 0.35 inches. Husky, Crescent, Matco, Williams, and Proto also had very little play at 0.37 inches or less. I put together a tester and we'll be using some pretty soft coupling nuts to see how much torque each wrench can handle before rounding off the fastener. To provide an apples to apples torque comparison, I'll extend the length of the shorter wrenches so that all wrenches are tested at 8 inches in length. And the Pittsburgh rounded out the nut at 230 pounds of downward force on the handle at 8 inches of handle length. 
And the 12-point Husky has a lot less slot compared to the Pittsburgh. And the Husky outperformed the Pittsburgh at 277 pounds before rounding off the fastener. I had to stop the test on the 6-point gear wrench at 248 pounds as the wrench began bending and just couldn't handle the torque. And a performance tool claims their rounded corners on the box end are designed for increased torque. And the close end of the wrench became an open-end wrench at only 206 pounds. And the Craftsman wrench didn't bend or twist nearly as much as the previous brands. And the Craftsman lost grip at 225 pounds. And the Cobalt offers less back and forth play than the Craftsman and it performed better as well at 267 pounds before losing grip. And the Crescent has even less slop than the Cobalt and it also beat the Cobalt at 270 pounds. And the Tecton has even more play than the Cobalt and the Crescent but still performed almost as well, 266 pounds. Klein Tools has more play than the Cobalt, Crescent, and the Tecton, and the Klein Tools lost grip at 257 pounds. The Williams has very little slot, but just isn't as wide as some of the other brands, 256 pounds. And the Matco performed very well in the first two tests, but it came up a little bit short on this test at 240 pounds. The 12-point gear wrench performed better than average at 266 pounds, the same as the Tecton. And the Right Tools moves into the lead at 321 pounds, or 44 pounds higher than the Husky. And a Proto performed even better than the right tools at a very impressive 334 pounds to move into the lead. And the Ghidorah wrench is very lightweight compared to the competition. And I had to stop the test at 163 pounds as the wrench began bending and twisting. And the Sunex takes the lead from the Proto with a very impressive 337 pounds. And the Mac tools performed very well in the first two tests, and it performed well in this test at 312 pounds. The box end on the SK Pro isn't as wide as some of the other brands, and the SK Pro lost grip at 285 pounds. And the vintage SK wrench actually outperformed the more junior and less experienced counterpart at 290 pounds. And the Facon performed quite a bit better than average at 324 pounds, which is good enough to move into third place behind the Proto. However, the handle on the Facon did experience a bend. And the Snap-on made it to 279 pounds before rounding off the nut. And the Sunex came out on top at 337 pounds. The Proto finished in a close second at 334, Facom 324, Wright 321, and Mac Tools 312 pounds. Let's use a piece of this half-inch Allen key wrench to test the failure load of each of the wrenches. Unlike the previous test, the entire open end of the wrench will make full contact and the jaws of the wrench will stretch and bend. Skipping the Pittsburgh since the wrench is broken and skipping the Husky since I made a mistake during the testing. And the gear wrench made it to 819.4 inch pounds before giving up. Unfortunately, the open end of the wrench has been stretched to be quite a bit larger than it was before the test. The box end of the performance tool broke off in the previous test and the open end broke off in this test at 655.8 inch pounds. And the Craftsman gave up a little bit early on this test at 719.7 inch pounds. Just like the Craftsman, the Cobalt gave up a little bit early at 682.6 inch pounds. And the Cobalt looks more like a 916th after that test. And the Crescent brand moves into the lead at 1,077 inch pounds. And the Tecton performed nearly the same as the Crescent brand at 1,162 inch pounds before giving up. And the Klein Tools moves into a commanding lead at 1,297 inch pounds or 220 inch pounds better than the second place finisher. And the Williams performed well above average at 1,197 inch pounds. And the Matco performed very well at 1,200 245 inch pounds, which is good enough to move into second place. And the gear wrench moves into the lead over the Klein Tools at 1,333 inch pounds. And the right tools perform good enough to move into fourth place just behind the Matco at 1,221 inch pounds. Instead of the jaw stretching and bending just like the other brands, the Proto slipped at 1,003 inch pounds. And the Ghidorah is just too light duty to handle the torque. I had to stop the test at 765 inch pounds when the handle began to bend. And the Sunex performed better than average at 1,072 inch pounds. Once again, the Mac tools performed very well at 1,204 inch pounds, which is well above average. And the SK Pro performed better than average at 1,091 inch pounds. And the vintage SK tools wrench gave up just short of 1,000 inch pounds or 91 inch pounds less than the new SK wrench. And the Facon performed well at 1,069 inch pounds, which is very close to the same as the SK Pro. And the Snap-on performed quite a bit better than average at 1,197 inch pounds. And the gear wrench came out on top at 1,333 inch pounds. Klein Tools finished in a close second at 1,297, Matco 1,245, Wright Tools 1,221, and Mac Tools 1,204 inch pounds. Let's once again test the box end until failure, this time using a hex allen key. And the Pittsburgh rolled over and gave up at 379 pounds. The wrench is badly bent. And the Husky performed quite a bit better than the Pittsburgh at 464 pounds pounds before becoming badly bent. Skipping the bent six-point gear wrench and the broken performance tool wrench. And a Craftsman is a pretty robust wrench and held on for a long time. But in this test, everything's either going to bend or break. And now it's time to test out that Craftsman warranty. Just kidding, this one's going in the trash. And things seemed to be going great for the Cobalt when they suddenly went from happy to snappy. 
Major damage to the cobalt. Fortunately, the safety rope did its job and held back the crescent brand from exacting revenge on me when the wrench broke at 489 pounds. And the Tecton refused to break, but it now has a new twist in it that'll work great for reaching around corners. And the Klein tools performed just about as well as the Husky, finally giving up at 458 pounds with a pretty bad bend. All of the wrenches are going to bend or break, and the Williams refused to bend. And that makes my knuckles hurt every time I see it. If you're looking for a wrench to use as a crowbar, the Matco probably isn't the best choice. 311 pounds and the Matco is badly bent. And the gear wrench performed quite a bit better than average on this test, finally giving up at 425 pounds. And the right tools refused to break, but it did experience a pretty bad bend after reaching a peak torque of 424 pounds. And the Proto is built like a tank and made it to 492 pounds. It never broke, but it does have a pretty bad bend. Skipping the Ghidor since it's already bent. And the Sunex gave up a lot sooner than most of the other brands at 312 pounds and now has a pretty bad bend. And the Mac wrench performed well in most of the testing and is near the top in this test at 468 pounds. Once again, the safety rope came in handy as the SK Pro tried to launch at 577 pounds, which is good enough to take the lead over the Craftsman. And the vintage SK wrench did nearly as well as the SK Pro and stayed together this time at 556 pounds. Skipping the Facon, which has a bent handle. And a Snap-on refused to snap, but it did experience a pretty bad bend at 379 pounds. If you're looking for wrench that can handle a lot of use and abuse, the SK Pro came in on top at 577 pounds. The SK Vintage did almost as well at 556, Craftsman 507, and Proto 492 pounds. So which brand won this showdown? The Mac Tools did the best with an overall finish of 3.6. However, the Proto also did very well with an average finish of 4.6. The 12-point gear wrench as well as the Snap-on tied for an average finish of 6. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.